according to the Washington Post, Twitter abruptly suspending four journalists from the site. Elon Musk tweeted out yesterday that doxing on Twitter will no longer be tolerated, saying it's a public safety violation. Uh, basically, posting people's locations on Twitter uh, is a public safety violation. These journalists work for The Washington Post, New York Times, CNN. Uh, for more on all this, let's welcome in the rest of our team, former Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley, and joining me on set, the former Lieutenant Governor of New York, Betsy McCoy. We're also joined by America's Bestie, host of America Right Now, Tom Basile, right here on Newsmax. Tom, good to have you. Good to uh, great here. to see you all on this Friday. Uh, Betsy, just your thoughts on this. Is this a good thing? Is Elon Musk um, taking bold, aggressive action in the right direction, or does this undermine what he's trying to do with it Twitter? It appears hypocritical. The fact is, anything that the law allows to be published should be on Twitter, period. Yeah, but if you're, but Betsy, if you're, if you are doxing people, if you are putting their, especially in this charged environment, you're putting their addresses, if you're putting their phone numbers, if you are putting potentially their children in danger. Um, well, that's not know, permitted. That, that is not permitted. But, but you know, doxing people is 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 potentially very dangerous. That's right. I it's mean, what if you what if you doxed? Your Look, local the New York Times is not allowed to do that, so it should not be on Twitter. Right, I said right. anything that's legally publishable should remain on Twitter. It should never be a matter of personal inconvenience, in this case Elon Musk, or personal opinion or partisanship. But if it's not legal to publish it, then it can be removed. Hogan, what do you make of this? Uh, we remember what happened yeah. to Brett Kavanaugh over the summer. Uh, it's a slippery yeah. slope. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that Elon Musk is doing this. He was being doxxed himself. Uh, basically, his That's location, right. the, the location of, of where he was, was being yeah. shared out. Um, that, that can't be a good thing. But this is a slippery slope for someone who, who claims to be a champion of the First Amendment. Yeah, but we're talking about two different things. Tom and Betsy are right in their respective lanes, one being legally. Is it legal to do it? Absolutely. But the second part of that is how dangerous is it when you consider the toxic environment? Now, I will make this point, as we all understand, had Elon Musk been an avowed lefty, an avowed uh, liberal, an avowed Democrat, and then people were putting up his travel plans and his whereabouts on his plane and his family's addresses. Yes, that's right. Then the outcry would be universal that you can't do this and how dare you. But as, as Tom mentioned, if you're uh, a Supreme Court justice that leans right, your address is fair game. We can go there. We can have a gun. We can have a hammer. We can have a knife because we're going to do something to you and that's all OK. So there are two different lanes here. But I do understand it does erode some of what Elon Musk is trying to do, which is be free speech all the time without yeah. a question. But one thing that's different here, and I'll end with this, Elon Musk does at least take responsibility that the buck stops with him and he makes the decisions. Whereas before, under the previous leadership, it was all shadowy. It was all underneath the radar, behind Agreed. the curtain. You never got to see. There was no rhyme Agreed. or reason. Tom Basile saying, had a, I make the decisions. I'm, I'm pulling them down. Tom Basile had a great piece in the Washington Times uh, about the Twitter files and, and how this is all... It's not really about Hunter Biden. It's about how what Twitter did and other social media platforms, including Google, uh, what they did in the lead up to the 2020 election that may have swung that election in Joe Biden's favor. Tom, excellent. Thank reporting. you. I appreciate um, that. Look, doxing, I, I've never been for doxing because it's words versus actually something that can directly lead to violence. When you're tweeting out somebody's location, uh, that can lead to violence. Again, I show you Brett Kavanaugh. I know some of the other media didn't really want to cover and talk about that story uh, like we did, but that was uh, that was really scary for us family, uh, and that was a really scary situation over the summer. I want to move on. Donald Trump making this uh, this announcement yesterday. Hogan, it was kind of funny to see sort of just people online and the media kind of melt down uh, over Trump's announcement. I think people were expecting something political. You know, he was going to... Look, yesterday I heard this, this narrative that he was going to throw his support behind Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis is not a candidate yet, so right. that wasn't going right. to happen. Uh, people kept saying he was going to announce... We speculated here on Wake Up America that he was going to announce who he was running with. How would we not know that? That would that would leak out. I don't expect that sure, this right. early. Um, no but maybe something, you know, with regard to Kevin McCarthy. So what happened yesterday is he made an announcement about these $99 NFTs, which sold out, which is pretty amazing. Sure. But then later in the day, he made a really good announcement. He, he unveiled basically a five-point plan to tackle censorship, um, vowing to protect sure. lawful speech from being labeled as disinformation. Basically something he plans to do if he gets elected in 2024. Hogan, you were there. You work with Donald Trump. Why would he do this? Why would he let well, first, sort of a, a silly announcement be overshadowed? 
Well, first things first, I want to if, if the producers can put up the picture of Donald Trump in the in the Superman esque outfit there. Right. I want to make this report to you guys here that no one probably knows. The only one of those NFTs where his face wasn't actually transposed onto a body, but it was actually his physique is that one. That is the real Donald Trump. No question. That's his six pack. Yep. His chest, his legs, <laughs> yeah, everything. Uh, no, I know exactly he wears, he wears clear. baggy shirts. Number one. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He just wears the baggy shirts to, to make everyone else feel better about themselves. Number one. Number two, it does step on your message here because you have a serious policy prescription for what you're going to do as president. Now, look, I get people in this town inside the Beltway and even those in the media up and down the uh, cell corridor are going to say, why isn't he talking about policy? Why? Donald Trump's a marketer. He understands what to do. As you mentioned, they all sold out. But when you put that NFT announcement on the same day as something that's a serious policy prescription that people really care about, and that is censorship and free speech in America, and he yeah. talked about amazing uh, policies there, some legal action he could take as president, you kind of step on the message. Yeah. But I will say this. Donald Trump is known to do more than one thing in a day, whereas Republicans and Democrats Ye in the past do one thing and then crow about it for six months. Donald Trump's a mover. He keeps yeah, going. So uh, yeah, you expect yeah, that but, in this. But this is really part of the bigger problem, right? And Trump has unfortunately exhibited this, you know, throughout the course of his presidency, where he'll have something really great to say or a great policy accomplishment. But then he gets on. He would get on Twitter and he would step all over his message, or he would insult somebody, or he would say something, and everybody would then shift their attention away from the good thing that he did to um, to his personality or to what he said or something controversial. Um, I was very surprised by this. I, I, and even and yeah, even for him, but they don't do that with relax. The See, the that's the difference. They don't do that. Right no, but there's uh, there's a lot more. I, I will say that you know there, the lack of message discipline has been a persistent problem for for the former president, um, and it extended during. You know, I mean, I talked to people. You were in the administration, but I talked to plenty of people in D.C. who worked in the administration who said, "Yeah, we don't know what we're going to say the next day. But Tom, we don't know I'll, what we're going to be dealing with, Tom, and that's a problem." I, I'll just say it, it's that. It's that personality trait that got him elected in 2016. And if he can harness that magic again in 2024, mm -hmm. he is going to be very difficult but it is to beat. A, but it so is I was a, disappointed a at 11 a... in the morning when I saw the lasers announcement was, yeah. was the NFT thing. But then later in the day, I was like, oh, now that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Right. But again, you, you're, you're dealing with the, the political reality of now you've got all of these people online, and I can't tell you how many people... Um, online who were saying, I was a Trump supporter, I voted for him twice, this is ridiculous, uh, this looks like grifting, um, it's, you know, where is this money going? A yeah. lot of people still questioning where all the money went that he, that he raised during the 2022 campaign that didn't get put into campaigns. Um, I mean, raised over $100 million. So, so there were a lot, he's got to deal with the fact that I think a yep. lot of people were very upset by this and thought it was unpresidential. And then Joe Biden trolling him back with a tweet of his own, which is unusual. Biden hasn't done that before. He tweeted back to Trump with his own quote unquote major announcement.